welcome back to the golden years of Hollywood. It's been a few weeks, hasn't it? But I'm so thrilled to be back tonight with such a wonderful movie with two terrific stars, Catherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy in Pat and Mike. I think you're going to love it. And it couldn't be more appropriate tonight with what's following after the movie. Pat and Mike was directed by George Cukor, who certainly knew how to direct Catherine Hepburn. They were friends for many, many years until the day that George Cukor died. The screenplay was written by Ruth Gordon, yes, the very same Ruth Gordon, who was an actress in so many movies, including the one that everyone remembers, Harold and Maud, and her husband, who was quite a few years younger, Garson Kanan. Now, Ruth Gordon and Garson Kanan wrote the screenplay for Adam's Rib, which was set in the legal world. And what a different world they've got here, the world of sport. Now, how did that come about? Well, Garson Kanan is the one who got the idea. He happened to be there at Catherine Hepburn's place or George Cukor's house, and it was a tennis day, and Catherine Hepburn was playing tennis. And he thought to himself, wouldn't that be a fun idea for a movie? Kate's so good at tennis and golf, we'll make her a sportswoman. Hence, Pat and Mike. Now, in 1951, Catherine Hepburn had been in Africa with Humphrey Bogart and company and John Huston making The African Queen. When she got back to America, she rested for a little while and she was a bit concerned about Spence, whom she loved so much. He'd been drinking rather heavily while she was away and she was determined to stop his drinking. So when they suggested at MGM she might like to do Pat and Mike, she was agreeable. She loved the script, her favourite director, and with Spence. As it turned out, the first time they read the script, they were in character. Spencer Tracy loved the part. In fact, he said it was one of the happiest films he'd ever made in his whole career. And they're great together, naturally. But will you please observe the words? Because the script is very clever. And you really should see Pat and Mike more than once to appreciate some of the great ironies and the little quirks of language that make it so much fun. A good cast in the film, one person I should have mentioned, and I was nearly going to forget, was Jim Backus, the voice of Mr. Magoo. He's in it. And so is William Ching. William Ching came from Broadway. He co-starred with Mary Martin in a show called Allegro. He plays Collier. He's the fiancé of Catherine Hepburn. And incidentally, ladies, some gentlemen are like this with their wives and fiancés. Note that. Just as some wives and fiancés can be like this with their husbands. What am I talking about? the relationship and the attitude that one sometimes has towards the other without even thinking about it. But it's psychologically very interesting. Sammy White plays Barney Graw. He's the sidekick of Spencer Tracy, or Mike. And on the right-hand side of your screen, we have none other than Aldo Ray, a delightful characterization as Davy Hucko. And you'll love the scene in which Catherine Hepburn tells Aldo Ray, well, she gives him some very good advice. There are lots of sporting people in the film. One of the greatest of them all is Babe Didrikson Zaharias. This was made in the early 50s, a few years before she died of cancer. What a great lady, and she appears in scenes with Kate. Also, other players include Gussie Moran, Don Budge, Frank Parker, Betty Hicks, Beverly Hansen, Helen Detweiler, and Chuck Connors in one of his earliest movie roles. I wonder who this is. Kate is the all-purpose sportswoman. Have you any idea to whom this is happening, thanks to Kate? Well, wait till you see Pat and Mike. I won't spoil the surprise, but you would never anticipate who that was. And now, let's enjoy together Pat and Mike. I hope you're enjoying Pat and Mike. I think it's a lovely movie. And I love those golfing scenes. They're beautifully shot, you know. The film very well made. It has a wonderful casual, spontaneous air about it. By the way, when Pat jumped off the train and got away from Collier, you remember the scene? And she was at a railway station. Did you recognise the railway station? Of course. It's the railway station at Carville, where the Hardy family lived. We saw it a few times, didn't we, during the Hardy family series. A little quote from Garson Kanan. He was a great friend of both Spence and Kate. And he says this, I once asked, has it ever occurred to you, Spence, to switch billing once in a while? He replied, no, it hasn't. So it was always Tracy and Hepburn, never Hepburn and Tracy. The gentleman came first. Spence's position as a Metro superstar meant that there was nothing to discuss. 
So it'll always Tracy and Hepburn. I chided him, writes Garson Kanan, about this and about his insistence on first billing. And he said, why not? Well, after all, Garson Kanan argued, she's the lady, you know. You're the man. Ladies first. Spencer Tracy replied, this is a movie, not a lifeboat. We shall return to Pattenmark in just a moment.